Paul S. Devereaux was quoted in the Miami Herald as saying, I want better quality in low-cost housing. You can have good design for the same price as bad. As if by prophecy, these words have characterized his professional and civic careers. Since that early assertion, he has taken the high road in effecting positive change in the nation's capital and other cities, and in the individual lives of those benefiting from his talent and commitment. As a leader, role model, and mentor, he has established his firm as a nurturing environment open to all who aspire to the joy and rewards of making architecture. He was president of the National Organization of Minority Architects from 1980 to 1981. Digest of Achievements, American Institute of Architects, 1992. Paul Spencer Defro Jr. was born in New Orleans in 1942. He loved to draw as a child, and as a result of winning a competition at his high school, he was offered the opportunity to study at Manual Arts High School in Los Angeles and live with his aunt and uncle. There he encountered, through a lecture, the legendary Paul Williams, architect of the stars of Hollywood. Paul was dazzled. He was impressed by Mr. Williams' presence and style and recognized that there was definitely a chance in architecture for him. Paul Williams became his role model. He enrolled at Southern University School of Architecture in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and graduated at the top of his class. His professor, Dean Thurman, said of Paul in 2010, he was my pride and joy, the first Southern University graduate to be elevated to fellow in the AIA. The Southern University experience exposed Paul as the all-around student, fun-loving, hard-working, honor student, pool-playing card expert, barber for profit, and chance taker, setting the tone for the rest of his life and providing the lessons necessary to become the rainmaker. Melvin Mitchell in his book, The Crisis of the African American Architect, says Devro's highly polished political and rain-making skills would lead to a series of breakthrough commissions for black firms. His first job was with Boeing Aircraft in Seattle, Washington. It was short-lived, for he was summoned by Uncle Sam to serve his country in the war with Vietnam. There was, however, another engagement stateside. It was the height of the civil rights movement, when the leader of the movement, Dr. Martin Luther King, was killed, riots broke out across the country. Paul was stationed at Fort Meade. The 6th Armored Cavalry Regiment based in Fort Meade was on the way. Trundling down the leafy Baltimore to Washington Parkway, they bivouacked at the old soldier's home in Upper Northwest Washington and were on the street patrolling by 6 p.m. In the head jeep rode Sergeant Paul Devereaux, a lanky young black soldier from New Orleans whose training as an architect had kept him out of Vietnam and on the 6th ACR's planning staff. The corner where the riot started, the People's Drug Store, through which the first brick was thrown, is now home to the enormous Frank Reeves Municipal Center, massive city office building initiated by Marion Barry and designed, coincidentally, by the firm of Paul Devereaux, the black architect who, as a young soldier, had ridden at the front of the 6th Armored Cavalry Regiment column on the afternoon of April 5th, 1968. When it opened in 1986, the building was hailed as a cornerstone of a yet unforeseeable future rebirth of the city's central districts. After serving his country in one of the most controversial wars in U.S. history, Paul returned to civilian life and the quest to practice architecture. As for Devereaux, his resume often got him the interview, but when he showed up, he was turned down. When one receptionist was told to show him in, she said, but he's black. He was eventually offered a job with Nolan, Norman, and Nolan of New Orleans, earning less than his contemporaries. 
He went to Washington to work with the urban planners of Westinghouse, where his experience landed him an associate position with D. Silvestro and Phelps of Miami. In 1972, he returned to Washington, D.C., where he started his own company, Paul Devereaux and Associates, Architects and Planners. Paul became husband to Brenda in 1972 and father to Leslie in 1975. Paul was joined by Marshall Purnell in 1978, and the firm of Devereaux and Purnell was launched. Partners Devereaux and Purnell have enjoyed an exciting architectural adventure, beginning with their design of the Reeves Center, Freddie Mac headquarters, and many others of acclaim, including the convention center and the new Nationals baseball stadium. But the Pepco building at 9th and G Streets in the nation's capital is Devereaux and Purnell's crown jewel. The Pepco building is a fresh wind blowing down 9th Street on a bright spring day. With Anthony Brown positioned as lead designer and with the strong and committed Devereaux and Purnell staff, this project was meant to be. Eileen Circo of Pepco said, he believes in his company and the talent of his people and has gone to the mat to convince us that his firm has the capability to do it, and they've delivered. There are two reasons to celebrate Pepco's new headquarters building downtown. One is the architecture with its boldly curved main facade of sparkling glass. The other reason is the architectural firm Devereaux and Purnell. The building is a first for the firm and also for the city. Partners Paul Devereaux and Marshall Purnell had never before designed a downtown building here, and neither had anyone else of their race. Surprisingly, astonishingly, the Pepco building is the first downtown building in this majority black city ever known to be designed by African American architects. That the team consists of African Americans is in a sense terribly important. The Pepco building, a critical first, a break in a senseless, discriminatory wall that has bedeviled even the best black architects in this city. But in another sense, the racial fact doesn't matter a whit. Good architects make good architecture. End of story. Shine and start for you to see what your life can truly be. It's the first office building in downtown Washington to be designed by an African-American architectural firm. It's the first building, actually. Paul Devereaux is the senior partner of the longtime Washington architectural firm Devereaux and Purnell, the architects of the new Pepco building with its distinctive curved side. We felt that most of the buildings in Washington were box buildings that come out to the overall uh, property line, and we felt that this would give us an opportunity to do something very creative and very exciting. Curved facade was one of those elements that allowed us to pay homage to the portrait gallery to the south of the building. It's certainly not a box and has gotten great reviews from architectural critics and Pepco employees alike. We're part of Washington history and, it was, and, and it's our staff to be commended for their fine work and efforts that uh, we're able to do that. Every morning I pass there on my way to work and I feel very good about coming down Ninth Street. Devereaux and Purnell, over the years, has spawned more than 13 architectural groups. It has consistently worked to mentor students and to give back to the community. Paul's good buildings speak his legacy. In a 1998 Washington Business Journal article, Paul is quoted as saying, I take time now to smell the roses. I still want to be around to see the firm grow and continue to prosper. In many ways, he still is. Oh, imagine no possessions. I wonder if you can. No need for greed or hunger. A brotherhood of man. Imagine all. Say 
I'm 